Alrighty folks, it's time for the cold case radiator install. I've already uh, put the fan shroud on it. If you want to see how this fan shroud was made, you can go to my previous videos. I'll probably put it at the end of this video. There's two parts to that. Uh, uh, fan shrouds are really easy to build. Just a quick reference on the fans for those that didn't see the last video. These are 14 inch fans. I wanted to go with the biggest fans that I could. I really wanted 16 because I wanted to fill from the top down to the bottom. But obviously, you can see from this point to this point, it's a little past the 28 inches that this is actually wide for the, uh, the core is 28.23 or something like that wide. So it barely fits, barely, barely. For 14 inch fans and I think that those fans are pretty big I think this will be just adequate for it and the best part is um, what was this two inch you can see how far this is from the radiator so when the fans are actually on it's gonna suck trapped air in or out also because the fans are so far from the fins so my opinion that's the perfect fan setup right there um, this radiator from cold case is their high performance radiator and it's taller. This one's 21 inches compared to what the stock is. Now I will tell you, I do not have the stock radiator to reference this on to show you the difference, but this radiator is bigger. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make this fit in your C10. If you don't know about cold case radiators, um, they're only two core, but they are uh, inch and a quarter inch tubes. So you have two side by side going across on the inside. And they say these run better than three core and they run better than four core. If you look online, nobody complains about cold case radiators, which is why I got one. So, um, or which was, which is why one's got for the truck. The upper hose and lower hose is the same size as your factory stock hoses. Uh, when I do LS swaps, I don't like to get the LS style because then you have to use smaller hoses. It makes it more complicated. I can usually fit these up pretty well with modifying the uh, water hoses. Um, it does have a port here that you can use for the steam vent. I don't use those. I use something different. I'll show it later on in the video. So that'll be just plugged. Uh, I didn't even want the automatic transmission cooler that goes in there. I think it's a waste of space because I never use those. I always use an external. I got a video coming out on that. And um, there's another pretty cool thing here. They give you, well, you got to pay for it. A cold case cap that's all aluminum, but it's not like they give you a set screw or anything. I'm assuming you have to, it's just a stock cap. I'm assuming you have to um, either glue this down put JB weld I don't know what you would put on this to make it stick because it basically just slides over your your radiator cap but I mean it's, it's just gonna freaking there's a way to do it I'll look online but like I said these it's not like these have set screws or anything that would have been a brilliant idea but there are ways you can make this stick. And um, let me spin this around for you.
So let me finish giving you the rundown on this. This is a pretty big radiator. Um, this is considered their performance radiator. And I guess the reason for that being is that they're 21 inches tall. I don't know what, I don't know what the factory size is for the height, but this is 21 inches tall. The core is 28.35, which is a little over 28 inches wide, left to right. And then uh, I've got the factory stock hoses on it, style for style hoses. And um, I don't see why it wouldn't work, but we're gonna have to use some of the 454 accessories for the mounting stuff. And I'm going to show you how to make this work in your C10 without having any issues whatsoever. You can see how wide that thing is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big radiator. All right, so let's get started. All right, so before you can uh, put any radiator back in here, you're going to have to make sure... You replace your um, little rubber bumpers for the radiator and you want to use new ones it doesn't matter if you use rubber or if you use those polyurethane or urethanes or whatever the hell they're called just replace these for the right stuff and then obviously you'll know where they go because they only go in two grooves and then the one way over here sorry is for a super super huge radiator but that's your standard mounting points so when you get your new ones that's right baby so when you get your new ones Obviously, they're going to look like this. They're going to be for a four core because they're going to be just a hair wider. You're going to have two on the bottom and two on the top. And these are the factory, factory ones that go on. And I'll show you this in a minute when I mount the radiator on your factory uh, radiator mounts you cannot use these they will not work I'm sure you C10 guys know how this goes or it's probably in reverse alright so we know we're not using these what you do have to use is I think it's 77 to 79 the 454 upper bracket that I cannot see let's see if we can find it I might have if I have some keys I would have thought it had been back here. Oh, it is. I'm trying to hide. So, in order to make this radiator work, you have to have this bracket. This is for the big block original radiator that came from GM and this is also original this is a reproduction but you're going to want the reproduction because I don't think you can find the originals but I'll show you how this is going to work 
once again you got to put your little rubber mounts in there I'm gonna have to make a, a tiny hole bigger just for the fact that no matter how try, how hard I try to push those rubbers in there I guess that didn't sound right nipples no matter how hard I try to push that nipple inside there it's just too hard so I'm going to open that up just a hair. So um, let me see if I can prop the camera so we can lay these inside. Pull the old ones out, which aren't bad. These are like urethane or something. You can tell by the color of the... Yeah, these are like a urethane. But they didn't fit because they were so wide. I mean, look at the difference. Now it's not gonna... Look how wide that is. So when you get... So when you get your new one, gonna go like this I'm gonna have to open up that hole a little bit too so let me get a little step step drill bit and open that up a hair give me a second so do you want to use a small step bit like this you just want to open it up a hair just enough for that little nipple to fit make sure you have one of these for a test And take it real slow. There's there's no hurry to drill in this hole to make it fit. Looks like I already kind of drilled on this one. And it still don't fit. So I used soap and water. I used everything I could use. And I couldn't get this sucker in there. Let me get some little pliers. So I got these little duck bills. They're flat. There's no groove on the inside. They're just flat. I'm going to gently pull on this. You don't want to break it but you just want to gently pull on it see if you can get the rubber to come out that didn't sound right did it This is stupid, seriously. Having to fight this like this. Bingo. All you gotta do is try. So that's it. Rinse and repeat. Do the other side. And I didn't use no grease or lubricant or anything. I'm, I'm doing it dry, but.
All right. That's not coming out for nothing. So now these are set, both sides. So this is done. Now I'm gonna drill some holes on the underneath for the other ones. I don't know if you're really gonna have light to see this. And secondly, there's no way for me to even push that, to, to suck it in from the other side. So I'm just going to set the other ones down inside. I don't even think you can see down there. Let me just grab them. Oh yeah! 